you got to university and you, or college and you went to Brown. Yes. What did you study? I studied renewable energy engineering. So it's a mix of physics, engineering, computer science. Yeah. Brown is a very interesting spot because you can make your own major. So I invented my major. At the time, I thought that renewable energy would be the field that would grow the most over the next 50 years. Basically, I built like solar cells and nuclear reactors and like studied hydro energy. But down the street from Brown is a place called RISD, the Rhode Island Design Institute. And it's the number one design school in the world. Actually, both founders of Airbnb went to RISD. So I took a lot of industrial design and graphic design courses at RISD. And I took classes in like philosophy and biotechnology and you know medicine etc because i just love learning brown also doesn't require you to take any requirements with the exception of two classes that have to do something with, with writing during the 32 courses that you take and so i just refused to take prerequisites i would email professors and i would get them to let me take the class i remember <laughs> i had one semester where two of my classes i was missing six or seven prerequisites to be in it it was like master's level courses and i was just yeah i'll figure it out and then i just did them and I, so i learned a lot it was like my two weeks in my cheeks started to hurt from smiling so much it was like the best experience of my life <laughs> okay and 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 you said that before you got there you you built a text-to-speech thing to be able to read the the pre reading that's right how did you just build a text-to-speech thing like were you dabbling with coding and stuff when you were younger like what was the story there yeah so my younger brother tyler is 18 months younger than me him and my sister were in the gifted program every single year then they both got into exeter uh, which is the number one high school in the u.s tyler lived in the same dorm that mark zuckerberg was when he was in high school tyler started building dragon ball z websites with html and css when he was in third grade in fifth grade he taught himself assembly so he could hack runescape and maple story games um, and we moved to the united states we met people using his hacks when the app store came out tyler was finishing seventh grade he had just moved to the United States. He had just skipped his first math class and skipped a class in Spanish, even though he didn't speak Spanish before. And he fished this old Toshiba out of the trash, who then had like a bunch of viruses and he cleaned them all up and he turned it into a Hackintosh and he taught himself how to build iPhone apps. And so I remember, you know, we were sharing a room, he'd just be on the computer all day. By the time he was 17, Tyler built 47 iPhone apps. One was ranked in the top 10 social networking category of the app store called Black SMS. It allows you to password protect and encrypt your text messages. So Tyler was coding all my childhood and I would always try and I would always fail because I would misspell the variables. And if you code and, you know, one variable says, you know, house correctly and one says incorrectly and I can't tell the difference, it would break. So it was very demoralizing. Right before college, I started going to hackathons and I would try to code, but I sucked. Uh, but what I would do is I would hop on a table and I have some idea and I'd convince people to join my team. And then I would organize people. And so I won the first four out of, I, I won four out of the first eight hackathons I did. One was at MIT. Um, one was by this place called Startup Week in Providence. And after that, I was like, okay, I have to learn how to code. And then I just took a bunch of courses on Udemy on how to build iPhone apps and how to build websites. And I would see how other people did it. The first version of Texas Speech for speech Tyler did most of the work. I did some of it. Uh, Tyler's blind in his left eye. He's astigmatic in his right eye. He does all of his work on a giant projector. He now leads the AI team at Speechify. So we worked on it together. Tyler did most of the work and I did some. But while I was in college, I kept teaching myself more and more so that I could fix this program because it was, it was always break. It started as a Mac app on my computer and it would let me highlight words. I'd hit a keyboard shortcut and it would read. And most Americans read at 200 words per minute. People who use Speechify by default will listen at 240. Most of us can actually listen faster than we can read, especially today, because most people know they're on YouTube, double speed, TikTok, everything is fast. Instagram, double speed, WhatsApp messages, podcasts, audiobooks. And then over the first month, people get to listen at 350 words per minute. I listen to everything at 700 words per minute. And so I was listening a lot faster than any other default text-to-speech readers allowed me to. But this thing kept breaking, so I kept fixing it, and then I took a couple of classes in computer science, and then I built a tool that would parse PDFs for me. So I could take, you know, 300-page PDF from my history class and turn it into a two-hour audiobook, and then I'd go work out and just finish the PDF. And I'd have, like, philosophy classes with super dense material from, like, Aristotle or Nietzsche or whatever, and i just put it on my computer, I'd click play, I'd listen a little bit slower, and I'd play it, like, classical music or, like... EDM music in the background with no no lyrics at like 30% volume. And so my ADHD brain was like very soothed because like 70% is on the reading and 30% is on the listening. And if you try to talk to me, you're like, ah, don't talk to me. I'm like zoned. I'd sit like that for like three hours.